Welcome back, my fellow duplicants. In one of my previous videos here, where I talked about disinfecting oxygen and water using the new storage tanks that were inside of the game, and that triggered a humongous response. I did not expect you guys to respond as much as you did, but holy moly. Matter of fact, if we take a look at the comment section here, there were over 200 comments, many of them uh, highly technical, describing different ideas and whatnot of how to simplify the system, how other ways we can use it, or whether or not it should even exist inside the game. So after reading through these comments, there's a couple of themes that you guys keep talking about over and over and over again. And so I wanted to make a blueprints video so that it's much more condensed version of, hey, here, you can do this inside of your base. And that's really what a blueprints video, which is something new that I'm trying to do here, is really about. It's not necessarily a tutorial where we go over the game functions. It's just putting the pieces together in a way that you can use. So I think that'll be really useful for a lot of people because uh, I do a lot of these videos where I'm doing this experiment and a lot of people like to see the whole process of how I how I get to where I've gone, if that makes sense. So I upload it as it is, the, the entire process right there. But the important thing is if you really just want the answer, usually just go to the end of the video because that's where I'm usually explaining things. So first things first, why in the world does this thing actually disinfect? Well, the reason as was mentioned right here by Samsonite Dove, is that these things are categorized as storage units and storage units are exposed to the gas behind them. So we've, if you put in something like a little slime or something there, it'll actually give off polluted oxygen to the environment around it. And these are storage devices currently in the game. Now, whether or not it's going to remain that way as the game progresses forward from this point on, I'm not sure. Only time will tell. Luckily, there's more than one way to disinfect slime lung from polluted oxygen, you know, we can use gas reservoirs or we don't need to use gas reservoirs. And that's what I'm gonna look at right now. So my previous system here used a lot of automation in order to sequence the flow into the top tank and then sequence the flow out from the bottom tank while it was actively checking to see if there were germs inside of it. Now this system over here, I think was, was kind of clever and it also introduced a lot of fun ideas and cool things you could do with the automation system. However, it's not the simplest method. Probably the simplest method that was talked about a fair amount of times over here, as you can see, 69 times uh, that time was mentioned, that's ironic, was the idea of looking at the half-life of the amount of germs you have and then predicting how long you need to hold that gas inside of the storage container before releasing it without germs. So looking just at half-life here, you can see that the polluted oxygen, when it's either very, very cold or exposed to chlorine, has that half-life of 11 seconds. So over here on the left, I have the amount of time that it takes to kill the amount of germs that I have. And what we can do is we can either just run that to different gates that have timers on them, or we can just simply use a certain amount of the day cycle in order to process things that way. So by taking the amount of time that it takes to kill that germ divided by the amount of time we have in a cycle, which is 600 seconds, you can get a prediction here of just how long of that cycle it'll take to do that operation, which is kill off that many germs. Does that make sense? It takes 38.5% of your total 600 seconds to kill off a little over a million germs. So one example of a comment talking about the using a day timer and whatnot is from High Tech Guy 18 So he says, oops, I didn't mean to dislike you, sorry. So just like Justin's saying here, if we use a timer to load and then one to empty, this is kind of what we end up with over here. Very, very simple, right? We got a gas reservoir, a shutoff valve in and out, right? So one goes in while the other goes out. And then you have the automation timer for the flow in and then the automation timer for the flow out. The thing is, you don't necessarily want to overfill this gas reservoir because if there's still gas left in the pipe, when you go to empty this, the amount of gas uh, that's up here will have germs inside of it and that will then pollute the gas remaining inside the reservoir once it starts flowing out. Because if it's inside of a pipe, it does not become exposed to the chlorine and therefore it doesn't get cleaned. And that was asked a bunch of times. Why, you know, why can't we just do it with pipes? So how I've controlled that in this blueprint here is by simply restricting the amount of time that this gas shutoff valve is going to be on. And I've also created a predictable amount of gas flow into the system. 
And how I've done that is I've used a gas reservoir down here connected to the pump. So if you just follow this gas, we can see that it's coming out of the pump. It's going into this reservoir right here and building up a decent amount of pressure. And because of that, every time this runs, it's going to move one kilogram of polluted oxygen per second. You don't necessarily need to have a tank here. You can get away without it, but the flow that's going to go into your reservoir will actually be less, unless you just have a bunch of pipe between here and there, right? Because you can only store one kilogram of polluted oxygen per tile inside of a pipe, whereas you can get a whole bunch here. So I'm just building up a nice big charge. And you can see here, I've set this to 22%. And you can see that that's flowing into the gas reservoir right there. And if we watch the day cycle here, you'll see that this thing will eventually stop. You can see the little arrow right there. So its activation time is at 0%. I can set that wherever I want in the day, so long as it doesn't, you know, it works with the other sensor. So in this example from zero to 22%, this valve was open. And during that amount of time, I moved 131 kilograms of polluted oxygen into that gas reservoir. So I have a good amount of polluted oxygen inside of here that's going to be cleaned. So at this point, all I need to do is really just wait. So you can see I've set that first one, it stopped at 22%. And then I just want to say, what is my activation time for this secondary, you know, for the, for the exit valve? And I set that at 50%. It's a fairly safe number. So you can see the amount of germs inside of here. It's going down, it's going down. Now it's like basically nothing. We're at 18 germs. That's not a big deal at all. But we're coming up on, you know, 50% right there. So you can see we're at three germs, two, one, and now it's exiting out of the system. Now, one thing to note about this setup right here is that there are a couple of spots where you're going to have some polluted oxygen that simply has some germs inside of it. You could set up a detector in order to recirculate that back around into your tank or whatever. But honestly, the amount of slime lung that's inside of those two one kilogram spots is so minimal that it's really not gonna hurt anybody. And that's one of the things to always keep in mind. Polluted oxygen in small quantities is not dangerous, but it's when you have large and large quantities of polluted oxygen with lots of slime lung and that that gets into your base, that's when your duplicates get sick. The way germs work is that there's a certain amount of germs in that quantity of gas, and when you mix that with a larger quantity of gas, those germs disperse. And since we're going to convert it to oxygen, oxygen will slowly kill germs over time, so the small amount that's in there is so insignificant, it's really not gonna hurt anybody. All right, so the gas is exiting out of this thing, and there's going to be just a, a couple of you know, a couple of kilograms with some slime lung in it. You can see right there that's got 4,000 or something, but but watch what happens over this next half cycle. You'll see that it's it's such a small amount, it really won't have a negative impact on this by the end of the end of the cycle. You can see that there's just 400 and something, but as we add more and more oxygen to this, we're just going to basically kill off any of the polluted oxygen, uh, any of the germs that were there, and it'll pretty much just disappear. Not to mention that's a very safe amount, you know, 200 and something, no big deal. All right, so you can see here, we're just about to the next release of gas, and <laughs> there's, there's no pollutants in this uh, chamber over here. All of that slime lung died off within one cycle. So there you have it, that's the blueprint for using a gas reservoir inside of a chlorine bath. And if you want a higher capacity, if you had, you know, just, if you're lucky enough to have just a whole bunch of in infectious polluted oxygen vents, well, then you could just line up a whole bunch of gas reservoirs. But for the most part, that right there is just plenty. Not to mention, I've ramped up the amount of slime lung that's inside of here way higher than it would actually be. All right, so let's focus on the classic method for killing off slime lung, and that is to either use temperature or pressure. Well, pressure is from zero to 1,000 kilograms, so that's fairly impractical to achieve within the game. However, temperature between, you know, if it's below 10 degrees or above 100 degrees Celsius is actually really quite good. And if you take a look at the comments over here, you can see that there's a, a couple of mentions to using wheeze warts to cool down the oxygen so that the slime lung dies. So as was mentioned here by Prios, still prefer cooling the infected polluted oxygen. 
you know, because then you end up with nice cold oxygen. So it's a nice byproduct. You can use it to cool your base and whatnot. So focusing on just using a wheeze wart, this is kind of the blueprint I came up with. And I'm sure it's like every other blueprint out there that uses a wheeze wart to kill off germs and whatnot. None of these blueprints, I mean, this is just my solution for the problem, but we're all solving the same puzzle together. So, you know, none of these ideas, it's not like it's some sort of patented thing and you can design it however you want. And I'm sure there's other methods that are, are a little bit more effective than what I got here. But this is shows exactly what we're looking for. All right, so how this system works right here is I just have a chamber of polluted oxygen and it is fed by a gas pump down here, which comes out of a high pressure gas vent. And then I have a gas shutoff valve that obviously just controls that on and off from an Atmos sensor. So from an automation standpoint, there's really only two sensors. It's, it's about as simple as automation can get. So maximum pressure just kind of shuts this thing off. You don't necessarily need to have it, but I wanted to be able to simulate different pressures. If that makes sense. You really can just feed this if you just want to run it at maximum pressure. No big deal. And you can get rid of that and get rid of that. In the middle here, I have a wheeze wart and all that's doing is actively cooling down the polluted oxygen inside of here. So here's kind of the magic. You can see over here on the left where the gas is flowing in, the temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius, so therefore it has slime lung inside of it. So you can see in this tile right here that the current temperature is actually killing off these germs, so they're actively dying. And if we go to a germ overlay, this is a good example of how this thing is actually working. So you have a lot of slime lung on the way in, but basically none on the way out because it's too cold. And this sensor right here is a germ sensor, and that only runs when it detects that there's no germs in this polluted oxygen. So you can, you can obviously stretch the system out more if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of different things as far as how you want to cool down your polluted oxygen, but the method is that it you basically have a higher temperature on one side and then it goes past 10 degrees and then on the side to the right you pump out that polluted oxygen because at that point it no longer has any germs in it. A gas pipe and inside of that gas pipe you have a bunch of polluted oxygen but that polluted oxygen has no germs in it. So the amount of tech inside of this blueprint is just that germ sensor which is right there super easy to get to and then I have the gas shutoff valve and the high pressure gas vent in that area as well. So that is also very, very easy to get to. So this method is, is way simpler to get to because it doesn't require industrial storage, which is all the way up there. And here's the thing. You don't need the gas shutoff valve at all or the high pressure gas vent. So if I take this and I just use a good old normal gas vent right there, the system should work and regulate all by itself. I think the reason you might want more, uh, a higher quantity of stuff inside of here is that you have a higher thermal mass, which makes it a little bit easier for the, the wheeze wart to maintain a nice cold temperature. At least that's my impression of it, but let's speed it up and see if it's actually true or not. All right, so the last question I wanna answer here is just how many kilograms can a, a extremely simple system like this process compared to just one gas reservoir tank over here on the left. So I'm going to time this one out and we'll see just how much we get there. All right, so this is right here at the beginning of the cycle. And you can see that ran right there. And each time that runs, it looks like it's moving about 7.8 kilograms. There's a total of nine germs in there. So I think that's manageable. All right, so I'm at the end of the cycle. This cold wheezewort system was able to clean 67.4 kilograms of polluted oxygen. So about half of what we were able to get out of the gas reservoir system. All right, so now I'm gonna compare this to the same system, but set to 19 kilograms and activate and turned on and off by a gas shutoff valve with a pressure sensor. So it's a little bit slightly different, but we'll be able to see just how much moves between one and the other. All right, so in one cycle, this system over here running at 19 kilograms of polluted oxygen was able to process 128 kilograms in this one test. So it is equivalent to what I was getting out of my gas reservoir system running with the different clock sensors. Now, obviously this is gonna be based off the temperature that you're feeding into this cooler thing, obviously because it has to come down to a certain temperature. 
but you can also go up to a higher temperature if you already have a very hot gas and it should do the same sort of thing. So there you have it, two different methods to do the exact same thing. Now, the one nice thing about the system over here on the left is that it can work with liquids in case you wanted to get rid of the food poisoning that's down here that has like a million food poisoning germs. You, know, you can run it to a liquid tank and do the exact same thing with the exact same sequence. So you can actually put these side by side if you really wanted to. Now, the thing is when it comes to liquid, for the most part, you can leave food poisoning inside of water and use it on pretty much anything inside your base so long as it doesn't get into your food. I made a video on this. It's called, when is it safe to use water with food poisoning in it? <laughs> so essentially what I'm saying there is you can run a shower, you can run a sink, you can grow plants, you can do all this stuff with, you know, clean water that has food poisoning in it and it won't have any ill effects. You can even run it through an electrolyzer and put it into the air and that doesn't have a negative effect on your duplicates. And it's been this way for a while inside of the game. So I'm currently using it inside of my bases right now and it's not a big deal. The only time you really want to get food poisoning out of your water is when you want to use it to cook food. And the only time you care about that is when you're making a mush bar, which takes water, or lice loaf, which takes water. Nothing else takes water. So once you get a little bit further into the game, food poisoning just kind of becomes a non-issue. So as you get further into the game, food poisoning inside of water is not really that big of a deal. What is a bigger deal is making sure that your duplicates have places to wash their hands, take showers, or do like the hand liquor thing with the chlorine. This thing, the hand sanitizer. Essentially, you just want to get the germs off of your duplicates so that they don't go and infect a bunch of stuff. Because that would be bad. But let's say you did want to clean up some water because, crap, you need a lot of lice loaf all of a sudden, which is, you know, one of those main staples inside of our base. Okay, so the important thing here to remember is that there's a little chunk of water right here, right? And that will come out of the system. And the thing is, it has food poisoning inside of it. Now, the problem is once that food poisoning gets into a pool with other polluted oxygen, uh, polluted water, it's going to start multiplying again. Now, even if you do clean it, you're still going to have a little bit too much food poisoning in that water. So just to kind of show you what I mean here, watch what happens when we just see this run. This first one comes out and you can see that that 10 kilograms, which is a fair amount of liquid, has, has 17,000 germs inside of it. Now the tile behind that was inside of that reservoir and it's clean. So the thing is, every time you run this, it starts with a little bit of food poisoning down here. And then you start to add more and more food poisoning or more and more polluted water to this area and it starts to multiply again. Now you can clean it and it can become, you know, it once it becomes water, it'll slowly die off. But the problem is you really want it to be absolutely clean before you go and use it for cooking food because that's the only reason you're cleaning it to begin with. Okay, so to solve that little problem, all I've done is put a germ sensor and then a liquid shutoff valve right behind that. So when this detects any amount of disease in there, it's going to activate that shutoff valve and take the water out of this line right here and just pull it on over here to be recycled and reprocessed. So here you can see this cycle running and there's there's just no germs down there. However, inside of this pipe, you can see that there's, um, well, there's a little bit of polluted water ready to be reprocessed. Probably be a good idea to have a little extra long pipe there. So that's how you can use this exact same setup right here to process liquid. Although you probably wouldn't run it to a tank. What you'd run it to is a uh, water sieve or maybe some sort of tank that you have a fish inside of there to clean it. There you go, you can put a little gulp fish in there. All right, so just one last point here, water. You can see that this water has food poisoning inside of it. And you can see that the half-life for this water is 20 cycles. So it's very, very long. Um, so that's why, you know, you definitely wanna kill it off by some method before you go and put it into a reservoir of some sort because the half-life is just too long inside of water in order for food poisoning to die in any useful amount of time. So there you have it. There's a couple of very simplified methods that'll hopefully help you out if you need to kill off slime lung 
or food poisoning inside of your base. Now, this is definitely a community effort. I'm not saying any of that, these ideas are actually like my own or I own them or any of that sort of thing. I know some people like really like to own their ideas, but we're all solving the exact same problem and we're all doing it in our own way. And so I'm really glad to see the community come together to try to share these ideas and whatnot so that all of us can learn and get better at the game and have more fun. So one of the cool ways we can actually share some of these blueprints and ideas rather than typing essays in the comment section down there below is to use this blueprints oxygen not included website right here, which was made by made by a guy that uh, actually found me over there on twi Twitter. So one of the cool new tools out there that we can use to kind of share these ideas rather than typing a very long essay down there in the description below um, is to use blueprints not included dot com over here. So this was made by a guy and shared he shared that with me over there on Twitter. So I've created a couple different blueprints where you can actually download this blueprint or just take a look at the image to kind of see what's going on there. And I've just taken a couple different screen grabs. You can see that's the cold polluted oxygen gas cleaner right there. And this is the chlorine one. Very, very simple. And whenever you're describing something like this, you know, bullet points and pictures are worth thousands of words. It's so much easier. So this is one method that actually might work out here to be able to share different ideas with each other in a way where we can actually get an easy access to the download file, which is then over here like this and if you scroll down and you put it in the right spot you should be able to find it so the chlorine polluted gas cleaner I created that blueprint over there and if I paste that inside my base there you have it you can see what that looks like now the game doesn't necessarily support blueprints yet hopefully at one sometime in the future it will but for right now we can use the debug tool to kind of stick that in there and you know, be like, oh, okay, that's what you did. And some things work and some things don't carry over, but it's one method. There'll be links to that in the description below. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat informative or helpful. And thank you for all of your input on the last video to kind of help simplify this and turn it into more of a guide and tutorial to really help everybody else. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.